Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today uh, in this webinar about uh, customized backup solutions for unreliable grid. I'm sure this is a very interesting topic for, for many of you joining today. Um, once again, uh, for joining us for to in a new showcase, I've just showcased today with uh, Studer and uh, in particular with Johannes uh, Tuwilika. Um, who is joining us today. I'm, I'm a bit jealous, I must say. He's joining us from uh, Namibia, from Windhoek, a beautiful, beautiful country, beautiful city. Hello, Johannes. Hi, how are you? John, can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, I will not take too much, uh, too much time and, and not give a long presentation about Avsia. I hope everybody who is joining us today already knows a little bit about Avsia. I think everybody who is on this call today wants to hear about your story and uh, your solutions for, for backup in, in case of uh, unreliable grids. Um, before I hand over the, the word to you, I'm just going to give a quick introduction about you and your backgrounds. Um, the... So we, we have you, as I said, joined from, uh, from Namibia. You're in charge of, uh, of sales for Studer. Um, you've been working in the solar industry for, for roughly six years now, uh, right now with uh, Studer Innotech, uh, before with Megatech. I'm sure uh, people familiar with Namibia uh, would be uh, uh, very familiar with this name. Um, you've been, from what I understand, uh, passionate about renewable energy for, for quite a few years now, and this, this is what has brought you to the industry. Um, and I understand one of the main drivers for, on your side is really to, to make sure that people understand the importance of, of quality equipment. And this is something that we, we repeat quite often uh, during our, our events and during our discussions with, uh, with people in our community. Um, there's been, unfortunately, cases of, of disappointment with solar energy, but very, very often um, it, it's always related to uh, uh, to a question of quality. So uh, I, I cannot agree more uh, with you on this point. Um, and then also just before I give you the word, uh, in terms of background, education, uh, electricity degree from the Namibian Institute of Mining and Technology, and then also later on a uh, degree in business administration. Um, and so this is what brings you here today with us. Uh, Johannes, so thanks again for, for taking the time and uh, please the, the word is yours. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Uh, well, as mentioned, I am Tuilika Johannes, sales manager for Suda Innotech in Africa. And I would like to give my presentation on um, our quality products that we have on offer and how our customized mini grid solutions work. Once again, welcome to our virtual training session with, on the showcase um, connection with um, Afshia. Well, the introduction has already been done. Um, I'm Duilika Johannes, 32 years of old. I'm multilingual. I've been with Tura Innotech for two years now. Uh, I've been in the solar industry for about six years. And yeah, we are one of the leading innovators and Great customer key. So the first slide, this is our headquarters in Switzerland. So Studer was formed in 1987 by Mr. Roland Studer. And our factory and headquarters are based in Sion, Switzerland. So why? Why would you use Studer? So we offer great technical support through emails, calls, diagrams. We offer a 10 year standard warranty. We offer reliability. Our products are 100% Swiss made and um, our factory runs 100% on renewable energy. 35% of our HR is invested in R&D. We've got over 120 studio partners across the world and over 150 countries. So Studa in Africa, our best achievements so far we've done or our products have been used in about 30 mini grids. And we were awarded in 2017 for a project in Tanzania, the best of grid installation by ARE. So to get to the main presentation, 
uh, customized backup solutions for unreliable grid networks. Well, um, Stura equipment can be used as UPS if you want to have a reliable power where you have equipment that you cannot afford to, to be off, off the grid. So with our backup UPS systems, once the grid fails, the inverter still kicks in by giving you power through the battery. So you still have power regardless of the grid being on or off. Um, I'd like to share one example that we did for, for one of these hybrid systems. It is a backup um, system in Islamic University of Gaza, which is in Gaza, Palestine. We used um, nine or two times 9,000 XTHs. We used two times 15 VT, which is our very quick charge controllers, the ATM. There was 140 kilowatts peak of uh, solar panels and two banks of 3,300 amp hour batteries. The grid coming in was 100 kVA, the power coming in from the grid. So as you can see, it's a very, very beautiful, huge installation that was done there. And it works perfectly up to date. Below is why, why did the client choose to go with Scooter? So our products are scalable. We offer a 10 year warranty. We offer great technical support. We have reliable solutions. Our products give out a quality AC output and we are always available for tests. So on the left, you can see the diagram, the line diagrams of how that installation was utilized in Palestine. One of our yeah, one of our best or also very good projects that we've done was in Kenya, Nairobi, at the EU, European Union delegation. So this was quite a big system as well, which was a 17 XTM 6000 inverters, charge inverter, charger inverters, um, 30 times 725 amp hour, 48 volt battery bank, and also 100 kVA um, grid power that was feeding in. So this was a project done by Fison at the Pediatric Hospital, Asmara Eritrea. So we have quite um, a few of these projects if you look on our website um, under case studies. So considering that our products are very reliable, they are actually very, very, very well placed to work for these type of applications in hospitals where power is critical. So one of the best features of our inverters is um, the smart boot, smart boost function. So this function allows you to constantly have a uh, quality power supply on your output, regardless of the grid power coming in. So this is achieved by the extender pulling power from the battery to give you a constant power output, regardless of grid failure or unreliable power coming in from the grid. So this is still just um, how more or less explanation of how the smart boost works. So this installation right here was done or is um, done by one of our very own and it's a, at the house of Mr. Elaine Perez. So he has this system just for him to have a quality power supply, considering that the grid where he lives is not um, very consistent and it's not very reliable. So as you can see, it's a quite a very small system, but it works for his needs. Okay, so now we move on to the off-grid. So our systems are perfectly suited for off-grid off -grid solutions, considering that we can go with a DC coupling where you have our extender and our vario track or vario string charge controllers integrated in a system. And then you can connect a backup generator just so that so you don't have to oversize your battery bank if you don't want to. We've also done a lot of telecom DC power only applications where mostly our video tracks and our video strings are used in these applications. So this one was done in Peru. Um, we've done quite a few on 
on islands and some in Southern Africa. So most of these systems have been running for a very long time now. So it's quite very reliable. Uh, this is the same, just to uh, show you how the cabinet was wired and the batteries, how the batteries were connected for that same installation for teleco telecommunications in Peru. So here yeah, they used Studa because the return on investment made a lot of sense. It was only two years. Uh, the communication and partnership between us and the client was world class. Uh, we have a worldwide presence. And considering where some of these telecom installations are, are installed, it's areas where it is very difficult to get very, very difficult access. So you install our products and more or less you forget that you installed them because they last and they last. Uh, we installed the various streams. Uh, I'm not sure if most of you are familiar with our products. We've got a various stream, which, um, can take up to 600 open circuit voltage and the 48 volts. And then we've got our video track series, which is um, 12, 24 to 48 volts. And they take up to 150 volts input from TV. So in this slide here, we can see a beautiful installation that was done by Rubicon. Uh, this was done in South Africa, the cradle of humankind. So this was a very, very, very big, beautiful system. Um, the client went with Sura because to bring the grid electricity was gonna be extremely more expensive than to go off grid. So the client chose to rather go off grid. For those of you familiar with Africa, the cradle of humankind. So there we used the nine XTH 8000s, 15 video tracks of the 120. We used the um, 84 kilowatt peak of TV, and there's an 8,000 amp hour battery bank. And then there's a generator of a 50 kVA for backup. So once again, this is the line diagram. And again, why they used that? So we were a very good alternative, a cheaper alternative as to bringing the grid. Uh, we had special, or our products are capable of special configurations. Um, the various string has a high PV input voltage, which goes all the way up to 900 volts open circuit. Um, the reliability of the grid, so considering there was no grid, the studio equipment formed the grid and it's quite, quite reliable. And they preferred our quality AC output. So as you can see, that's the PV or the grid of humankind where the system was installed. And this next slide is on the rural hospital in Maasai region in Kenya. So as a slide, as a previous slide, you can see that our equipment is preferred and is quite or is widely used in these hospital applications where having consistent and reliable power is quite critical. So as you can see, that is the line diagram up on the top right. Not gonna go so much into the products that they used in there. I think we are running out of time. And then this next slide is based on lithium batteries. So you get the passive BMS and you get the active BMS lithium batteries. So the passive BMS is where you, the battery is without communication. So you need to adjust the charge cycle and you need to apply configuration settings in the, in the menu, the RCC. So some of these batteries you can see on the left. And then you see an example of a line diagram. Okay, and now considering that a lot of people have now started moving into, into lithium ion batteries, um, that's where you use our active PMS, where our system is connected to an XCOM can. This um, just enables um, the lithium batteries to communicate with the SUDA system. So on the right is just some of the batteries that are integrated with SUDA that, are, that can communicate with our protocol. So you've got uh, BYD, Pylon Tech, SolarMD, Bluenova, just for example, and Freedom One. 
this one's a South African based lithium ion batteries. Uh, nice slides. So this one is a factory in South Africa for off grid with lithium. So the batteries that we used here were Blue Nova lithium ion batteries and together with our extender and our radio track systems. So this was put up in a factory in South Africa because they needed constant reliable power. And obviously with South Africa having so many um, power cuts, they could not afford to, they, they could not afford to not go with a hybrid system to a system when, or when there's power cuts in South Africa. Below is a very beautiful example of an installation done in Yerts, France, which is off grid with lithium. We've also got a luxury resort in Panama, off grid with lithium. So, most of these places, like I said, are very remote, and they are places where, as the installer, you would not want to constantly go out for call outs or to go do repairs or to go do replacements. So you'd want to put in a system that you know is gonna work for the next 15 to 20 years and you forget about it. So yes, this was our presentation. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Johannes. Um, a very wide uh, presentation of applications, locations, uh, a lot of uh, very challenging locations, which uh, I believe tells a lot about mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, the, the the quality and the uh, the resistance of the of the equipment. Um, I'm gonna start to to ask you a few questions, but before I do so, I, I invite everybody to also submit their questions through the the Q and A section. Um, so based on the number of questions, if we were not able to address them all, at least we will um, track them there and we will make sure to share them with you, Johannes, so that you are able to, to follow up with uh, everybody who will have asked a question. No stupid questions. All questions are good. So please <laughs> feel free uh, and uh, ask everything you ever wanted to ask because uh, today is the time. Um, I have a few questions for you. Um, first question maybe from Mark. Um, Mark is not very technical. He's interested, but he's not a technician. And uh, he Ooh. would like you to, to share a little bit, to explain with simple words how this entire system would work in a setup with uh, solar storage and diesel. I haven't really seen such a case in, in your slides. Um, what kind of impacts does it have? Uh, wh what are the, the technical details uh, that we need to, to keep an eye on when, when starting such a project? Okay, well, first, uh, there, is quite, there is some uh, of those uh, examples in the, in the slide. So diesel meaning that he's gonna be using a, a generator, a genset. Mm -hmm. So if he's gonna be using a genset, it's quite, uh, a gens using a genset is quite easy to integrate into our system considering that we have a AC in where our products can then run from the, our, our, what happens is like, for instance, when you have batteries and you have a genset and you have our system equipment. So when your batteries go flat, our system is then able to start, automatically start the generator so that he has constant power. Okay, thank you very much. I hope uh, this addresses your question, Mark. If not, just uh, feel free to to send a follow up question. Um, another question from the from the audience. I have um, Loy, uh, who is wondering about um, your implication into into a project. How far do you go? Like, um, are you able to to supply the entire system? Because in, in, in what you have presented, you were describing full mm -hmm. systems. Um, are you are you able to 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 supply all the equipments, or um, are you focusing exclusively on the inverters? How do you normally work? Well, um, when it comes to integration with, um, for instance, PV and batteries, we 
to not focus on the supply of that. So we only supply studio equipment. But on our design, we can design it for you, including the systems and how it's going to operate, where you can go source the other products from the, or, I don't know, from other suppliers that you prefer in the other, in the other industries. Yeah. So we only, we only, um, we only supply our own studio equipment. Yeah. But we yeah. offer designs where, yeah. Very good. And, and, and to continue this question, um, is there a possibility for, for you to, to provide some training maybe to, to the final, uh, to the end user uh, or to, to the partner who would be installing uh, your equipment? Uh, that's a very good question because um, we've been running quite a few uh, training sessions on, on LinkedIn that we've been promoting. So we do offer training and when before COVID hit us, we actually had our distributors going for training to the factory in Switzerland. So we, we will continue throughout the year to offer training sessions for those that want to offer training. And they can just follow our page on LinkedIn or my page because we always post it on there. Yeah, yeah, and we will make sure to to share the the details to to all the people who have signed up for for today's session, uh, so that they know yes. where to to find the information. And as uh, through Avzia, we will of course uh, promote those training sessions. Very good, thank you very much. Um, coming back on the on the batteries and uh, the equipment you supply and the the equipment you don't supply, um, you mentioned several brands uh, of batteries. Uh, my question would be, are your solutions compatible with any kind of batteries and all brands, or do you have some kind of limitations or maybe some preferences based on, on the brands and the quality that, that you are familiar with? Okay, so we do not favor one manufacturer over the other, but we do advise that our clients use quality assured batteries. Because, um, I mean, if you're going to be investing in an expensive system and going off-grid or hybrid, you're going to want a battery that's going to be worth the return on investment. So we do not, we cannot say use this battery or use that battery, but um, it will be better to consult us on the batteries you want to use because that also affects your warranty quite heavily. Fair enough. And without, of course, favoring one brand or another, um, what is what, what is your um, experience in the last, let's say, uh, 12, maybe 12, 24 months? Um, how do you see the, the evolution between uh, lithium and, and lead acid? Um, are you really seeing lithium like taking over and, and being applied in all projects? Or do you see lead acid still being very present in, in some applications? What, what would be your recommendations for, for people who are looking to uh, to start their uh, off-grid projects? Um, we've seen quite a huge shift into lithium-ion batteries. So that has happened across Southern Africa. Um, most of our projects that I've seen happening of late in the past year or so has mostly predominantly been um, lithium-ion batteries, especially in Africa. Um, there is instances where people still like to go for the lead acid batteries, but that is on solar systems, smaller off-grid systems where a client doesn't have uh, or doesn't have the initial capital to invest in, in lithium, but is willing to replace batteries every two to three years because that's what they are capable of. But they will never have that initial investment to invest in lithium ion once off. Yeah, yeah uh, very good point. It, it is indeed uh, still a challenge of uh, initial, initial capex. Um, talking, yeah. staying, staying on the topic of um, size and installed capacity, we have a question of, uh, from Samir, um, who is mm -hmm. asking about uh, installations above uh, 30 kVA. Um, and, and so comparing maybe with uh, other brands. Um, and so maybe I, I will rephrase this question. Um, is there any specific sweet spots in terms of installed capacity where your equipment is, is um, more suited or better adapted than, than others? Um, well, I would say yes, 
um, considering that um, our equipment is quite versatile in how you can use it. And also because it is rigid and it survives or can be used in quite tough and rough conditions. For instance, at high altitudes, um, performs better at higher temperatures. So yeah, the reliability more, more than anything else, the reliability, because um, I think most suppliers or most other manufacturers um, also can scale up their, their inverter size, sizes probably from 30 all the way to 105, most of them, I think. But on our equipment for a centralized system, we can go up to 72 kVA. And for a decentralized system, we can go up to 360 kVA. We have a new inverter we are um, about to release called the Next, which is the three-phase 16 kVA inverter. And hopefully with that, as we continue doing our tests, we can go much, much bigger. Fair enough. There, there were several questions about this, so uh, I'm happy you, you were able to, to address mm -hmm. this. We also have some questions uh, and, and, and very logical questions about uh, warranty. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your warranties, um, some special conditions maybe, how this compares to, uh, uh, to competitors? Because uh, of course, this is a very important element when, when choosing inverters. Okay, so our warranty has a standard 10 years. So it comes with a five year warranty and a five year warranty extra if you register your system with us on our website. So that gives you a total of a 10 year warranty. So by all means, we always try to not decline the warranty. So our first, our first impression of a system is to always not try and decline. So for us to decline the warranty is because we can see it's clearly um, an installation fault or it's clearly damaged by lightning or whatever happened onto the system. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. That's a very positive signal, I'm sure. And then the, a question which is natural to go with this. I mean, it's always great to say, okay, no problem. You can count on us. Uh, we, will, uh, mm -hmm. we will repair, we will fix, we will exchange as quickly as we, as we can. Um, but we have a question about, okay, and, but how quickly can you do this? How present are you across Africa? Um, and, and how does it work? Is everything centralized in Switzerland or do you have several distributors across the continent? How basically, how quickly can users expect a reaction uh, if something goes wrong? Okay, so our first line or our first line of assistance is um, to always try and assist you um, without you having to send the product back. Um, we have... Um, we have distributors across Africa, uh, South Africa, Nigeria, and Namibia. So, yeah, in Kenya, we have we have a lot of distributors practically. That's what I'm trying to <laughs> to say. Um, and you can take the product to any of them, and they are also fully capable of doing the services and repairs on our products. Okay, so very localized, and then if need be, uh, a bit more international support. Yes. Um, we have several very, very technical questions from Leonard. Uh, Leonard, I think I will share those questions with Johannes offline, and uh, I'm sure he will be more than happy to address them. Um, but those are very specific questions about very specific personal projects and capacities. So uh, I'm sure it will be easier <laughs> for, uh, for you to, to connect on that. Very interesting point um, about, um, and this is a curiosity of mine, Johannes, um, what are the specificities that we need to take into account in systems where, um, where it is not allowed to re-inject into the grid compared to other countries where net metering is allowed or re-injection is allowed? Um, does this make a big difference in terms of uh, equipment choice? And uh, if so, what are those differences? Okay, so with our, with our equipment, we... We prefer, or we prefer that people do not use them to feed back into the grid unless they want to do an AC coupling system where, where there's frequency shifting, so where you in incorporate uh, grid feeding inverter into the system. So under those conditions, yes, but um, 
predominantly we do not prefer or allow unless it's um, how do I put it? Unless it's one of our really much more trained installers um, that we do not feed back into the grid. Fair enough. I um, I'm looking at the clock. We still have a few more minutes, so if you if you have some more questions, please feel free to to shoot them now. And in the meantime, I would like to to ask you a little bit about uh, news from the southern part of Africa and, and, and what your opinion on the market is. There's been a, a very big um, evolution in South Africa uh, about this uh, maximum threshold for, for CNI projects that has evolved. Um, what, what's your perspective on this and, and how do you think this will uh, generally impact um, the solar industry in South Africa, but would it have ripple effects maybe on neighboring countries as well? How, how do you see it? Um, I do not actually see it as having a rippling effect um, because uh, most of, especially Southern Africa, we do not have the electrical problems or the power supply problems that South Africa has or that, experience, or that they experience. So uh, most of, um, most of the Southern African countries and most of Africa is more predominantly hybrid and off-grid systems. Yeah, so uh, South Africa is a, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. South Africa, is one of the, yeah, South Africa is one of the only special cases where you find a lot of grid feeding installations being done. Um, it becomes less and less so throughout Africa. So yeah. Fair enough. We'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, clearly there is a lot of attention right now in South Africa, but this should not make us uh, forget all the other places <laughs> where a lot of solar can be installed as well. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, I would like to come back to, to some of the things you, you presented and some of the things you, you already mentioned. Um, we briefly spoke about um, uh, supplying the... Uh, um, other pieces of equipment, you said, no, we don't do this. We can uh, maybe guide you. And uh, my question mm -hmm. is specifically about uh, this guidance. Um, we've seen all of us here, uh, many, many projects, unfortunately, we, which have been uh, um, not so successful over time in many cases, because the battery uh, was improperly sized. And so the, the, the batteries got drained uh, quicker than they should have. Um, is this something that you can assist with while the, the, the end user is preparing for their project? Um, or, or do you just focus on, on, on your part? How do you work on, on such cases? Uh, so usually we focus on, on our own products, but I think uh, most clients usually give us um, their load profiles of what they want to go use on the system how the system is supposed to be set up, what they expect from the system. And then we can help them in designing the system. Uh, we just don't go as far as telling them what product to go use, but we can assist them with um, the, the correct sizing of the system. Very good. And then I also, before, before we close for today, um, I have a quick question about uh, what you mentioned on the, the telecom sites. Um, if if mm -hmm. I remember correctly, on, on one of your slides, you explained that your customer chose for your products because they got a return on investment of two years. Um, mm -hmm. can, can you explain uh, this a little bit, like how, how this was calculated, how this was perceived by, by the client? Is it on, on the entire installation? Um, is it compared to maybe diesel that they were using previously? How, how was this calculated? Because this, this sounds very, very fast, very short time. Yeah, very short time, yeah. Yeah, so it's calculated uh, based on the alternatives that could have been used. So obviously, as a, as a client, if you are going to, to um, invest in a tobacco tower or, or, is, or even just a normal off-grid or hybrid system for your own home, you are going to look at other alternatives and see what is the cheapest way to bring power to that point and what is the alternative cost and how much would it have cost you, for instance, to use diesel or electricity up to that point of when this um, material will pay itself back. So that's basically what it was, um, that it was based on. 
Very good. And then you you highlighted again on on the telecom um, telecom side of things. You you mentioned a few projects in uh, in Latin America. Um, have you also worked on telecom sites across the African continent? Uh, yes. Um, there's I think two two projects that were done on the Faroe Islands by Continuous Power South Africa. So they predominantly do most of the telecom. Yeah, telecom towers in Africa. No, uh, this is a uh, the reason I'm asking is because there is more and more um, activity around this uh, this topic with special purpose vehicles mm -hmm. being set up to um, to finance uh, an ESCO model with uh, large numbers of telecom sites. So this is a a very encouraging mm -hmm. uh, development of the industry here. Um, and so it's yes, great to know that you've always uh, also been working on, on the side uh, of the globe. Um, yes. We are reaching the end of our presentation today. I'm just checking if we have any, any last question. Um, Samir, yes, one last question about telecommunication. Um, how are Studer solutions integrated in existing backup systems of telecom towers? Yes, this is a good point. Um, most of these telecom sites um, have had batteries already. So we're not starting from a greenfield project. Uh, these, uh, mm -hmm. these sites are already equipped with batteries. Does this play a role if you if you jump in at some point and and uh, or are you able to adapt to a, a pre existing um, installation? Well, we we actually our products are capable of adapting. Uh, preferably, we prefer our own systems to be used from the start. But um, I've seen a lot of installations and come across a lot of installations where our products were integrated with others. Um, as for batteries, our products work with um, latest lithium, so that doesn't really play a major role. Thank you. And I see that Serge has raised his hand. Serge, I, I made you join our chat here with Johannes. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, John. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Very okay, good. great. Yes, Hello. Hello, John. Hi, how are you, Johannes? I just wanted to uh, pop in the, the topic you raised just before regarding South Africa CNI market, mm -hmm. because uh, my opinion is first that uh, it will it might be or you, it will be a great market like we can see in other countries and specifically in Europe, um, and we will come we, we will come this summer actually we will have the first unit produced in August we come with a, a new inverter hybrid inverter. 15 kVA, 15 kilowatt solar, uh, three phase, and this product will be uh, dedicated to such market. And specifically in South Africa, very soon we will get the you know the special norm for the grid the connected systems, and uh, definitely we want to address this market in South Africa and then in the rest of uh, of other countries in Africa. The name of the product is Next Three, and it's coming now. Well, very good. Uh, thank you very much for for clarifying on this. And I think this is a very good, uh, very good way of uh, finishing our our chat today. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thanks, uh, Johannes, and thank you everybody who has been joining today. Um, you know, you know how it works. Um, we will be sharing the the slides with you later on. Um, we will make sure that you get all the contact details uh, of Johannes so that you can um, get in touch with him and, and discuss your either specific need or specific projects. Um, before I let you go, I would like to quickly uh, let, you, let you know about um, more AVSIA activities uh, which are coming up. As you see, we, we started in January and, and have had quite a few events already. Um, today in July, we were having the showcase with Studer. Next week, uh, for the French speakers, we will have a webinar focused on uh, irrigation and, and uh, solar water pumping. Um, and then August, full of events, uh, great asset financing models uh, for mini grids, a focus on solar for healthcare with really some very, very cool solutions um, that we wish the, the entire world to know about. Huawei will be joining us to focus 
on uh, their latest CNI solutions. That's really the, the hot topic of the moment right now. Um, and in September, I hope many of you will join us for the first Avzia Solar Quiz. We will do a, a fun game uh, with teams from different companies to test your knowledge of the African solar industry. Um, lots of fun with our good friend Vahid. Um, and, and you see many more, many more activities coming up in, in the rest of uh, the year. So I hope you will be able to, to join us then. And for today, well, I thank you once again for, uh, for staying with us and I wish you a wonderful rest of the day. <laughs>